Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the Voler Witch for the board game Blood Rage. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Forgive me about any names I mention when it comes to Blood Rage. I am not that great at it. The Voler Witch is pretty nice uh, in the game because, you know, she's a 3+, plus and she may retreat from an outer province to Yrgrasil, again, forgive me, instead of being destroyed. So a very powerful ability to not be destroyed and can be comboed with other uh, cards that send you to the center of the map quite easily. So definitely one of my favorites, which is why I wanted to get her painted. And she's really quick and easy. Uh, and not just the painting, but even, you know, the, the mold lines here. As you can see, it's not, you know, it's not it's not terrible. It, in, in the sense that they're not very large and they're all easy to get to. And so the placement's really nice. So it's just kind of on the side of the mini. Uh, just kind of straight up and down, which is which is kind of nice. And she, you know, her knees aren't bent or anything like that, so you're not like trying to get into some hard to reach place. Even on her kind of cape cloak thing, you can see it's just kind of on the side, not through the texture, which is always very difficult to actually access. So I'm gonna spend some time to really make it nice and smooth on on the dagger there as well. Just making sure, especially on the skin, it's it's nice and and smooth. And I mean. The, it, the mini is so small anyway, um, and so all the details are kind of tiny on her to begin with. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm not adding a line where there shouldn't be, because I feel it would be more noticeable, though again, it's it's quite easy to get rid of. That right there, what you're seeing there, is probably the most um, egregious one there is, but again, not hard to get to. You just kind of have to you know, make sure you get it. And we're going to start with the basic skin tone. So I am not going to shade this model's skin at all. I'm going to do nothing but highlights. Uh, I say it like I'm doing a whole lot. But uh, really, it's it's this is a really good color uh, compared to the, the concept art, as, as you could see. Though her skin is kind of two separate colors because she's wearing like a lot of makeup on, you know, from like her chest up and then into her face. It's almost like some weird witch geisha, <laughs> right? I mean, it's... It, it, it's kind of odd. You, you'll see. But the basic skin tone on pretty much 50% of the model, um, because she's not affected by the cold either, it seems. And that's that's all right. More power to her, I suppose. But, yeah, you know, so she's got uh, some jewelry there. As you can tell, I just completely ignored trying to avoid it. I, I'm going to paint it in a darker color anyway, or a metallic. But either way, this is such a light color, I'm not too concerned with it. In fact, I'd put this on par with a gray when it came to being able to darken it or lighten it at, at your leisure. So not particularly worried about it. And the details are so small anyway, it's not, it's just not worth it. So I'm going to, you know, get the hand, but there is a little strap there. Again, just painting right over it. No big deal. So really you have the torso, the legs, and the arms, and the face. And then there's a tiny spot that'll be her ears and neck. You'll see that, that you know, real soon here. Uh, again, you know, make sure you get the tops and bottoms of the hands. I, I have forgotten those. Um, you know, maybe you're smarter than I am, but I tend to forget things. So on this model, and again, it'll look easier once it's painted, but she does have some hair going over her forehead, and she does have her hair going uh, to the side down her neck. Um, she is kind of a mix between the concept art. I'll get back to that. Uh, so Abaddon Black for the, uh, the hair here, and I'm just going to do a dry brush and call it good later. Uh, so if you noticed in the concept art, she's holding the skull, like the middle uh, character in that concept art, uh, but she has a dagger from the person on the right, and she's not in any of their poses. I believe her hair is from the one on the on that model's right, so like the left of the uh, concept art. So be on the lookout for that at the end, or uh, go back if, if you so wish, but that's what I'm kind of basing this one off of. Again, Adrian Smith art is great and fantastic, but uh, and doesn't necessarily... Uh, blend well with uh, miniatures. Some Rhinox Hide. This is just kind of my go-to dark brown, uh, just because I like I like that it's actually brown. A lot of times, at least to my eyes, and, and you know, again, uh, maybe partially colorblind here, but I, I find a lot of dark browns to look more or less black, especially from a distance, right? I mean, again, you're going to look at these later. Uh, that's an oopsie on her leg. Her leg does not have a, a brown blemish. Uh, at least not in the concept art. I'll get rid of that. No big deal. Anyway, uh, from a distance, I think you can really see the brown quite easily. Uh, also, if, if you notice, I mean, that's some fairly fine detail, but I'm just using my character brush uh, 
and it's I believe it's comparable to a one, if I'm not mistaken. It might be a two, but I believe a two is closer to the regiment brush. Anyway, there's there's nothing really too finicky about this model when it comes to you know getting the right angle or you know getting a very fine tip. I'll use that on the face a bit, but otherwise. I'm just going to be using this brush, so even on that kind of um, strap around the side of her waist, uh, you know, the, the tip is fine. It's it's perfectly acceptable to pretty much just use three brushes here, right? So you have your, your character or, or your one, and then you have your your fine detail uh, or your zero or, I don't know, that's probably like a zero, zero, and, uh, and then a dry brush, right? you got to have a dry brush on pretty much any model, at least any model I'm painting. I'm not sure if I have... I believe I've used a dry brush on every single model I've ever painted, um, ever, <laughs> not not just since recording. Uh, it's too easy and quick of a technique, and adds a whole lot, especially when you get texture like this. So again, just filling it in, um, you know, slowly but surely. Uh, this uh, this paint, when it waters down, it, it it typically needs a second coat in certain spaces. I don't know the rhyme or reason, but I, I normally have to do some touch up, but I'll do that off camera. And uh, notice she does have these kind of spikes coming off of her shoulders. Um, and they're actually in her hair too, but I already painted those black because I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. But here I can avoid it pretty easily. Those are going to be bones. So here's the Screaming Skull, speaking of bone. It's so my go-to bone because I always shade it and then highlight back up. And I like that color combination. Um, I might try at some point, it depends on the concept art I suppose, but a, a more white bone. Um, but typically, then I just go gray and just avoid any kind of bone color. So there's those in the in her back. They're just like it's kind of bone rivets, or I don't know what they're called. And those are not ears. She does have an ear. Uh, those are little bone picks she uses to tie up her hair. You can see that in the concept art, I, I believe. Anyway, she's got this kind of uh, again more bones. Uh, I don't know. She probably uses it in her witchcraft or something. And uh, more bones down there too. And the lead belcher. Uh, this is uh, a quite dark. And uh, I don't know, it's a very, very dark silver, but I like it. I'm going to actually line it up with another silver uh, strategically. So this is going to be kind of the base coat of this dagger. And again, even the handle, super easy to get. Uh, some Abaddon Black here on the bracelet. I, I forgot that, so I'm drawing that in there. Silesian Drab, here's that dry brush I promised. And this is to bring out that texture, really make a pop. Makes such a huge difference. I'm also working it on the the edges, uh, literally just running my brush up. So it's a little bit of a harder, you could highlight that if you want, but I find going lengthwise, you know, like the long way on the dry brush does just fine. And a hint on the inside, but I want it mostly dark. Gehenna's gold for the, you know, two gold clasps that she has. I'm assuming that's what's, you know, kind of holding the, the clothes together. And then she has this little kind of gold bracelet that swirls around twice over her or almost three times what it looks of it over her, her wrist over there. Uh, but the other wrist does not have a gold. And another anklet. I'm going to toss that gold. I don't recall if it shows that. Uh, here is the red leather. This is uh, for her uh, dagger holster uh, thing. Uh, this is not in the concept dart, so I had my wife pick the color in. She liked this one. I do too. This is a fun color. It uh, really pops and is quite noticeable on the on the back there and adds a little bit of color. And I decided to bring that to the front too. So, you know... Otherwise, she's mainly just, what, skin and brown, so this adds a bit. So Mechanicus Standard Gray, that's just kind of my go-to, not, it's not a super dark gray, it's just kind of a, a normal gray uh, in my mind, and that's for uh, the kind of rock she's holding on there. Hey, you get a little bit of basing for free, and I'm dry brushing that same gray just to add a little bit of texture and, uh, you know, to make it not just pure black, because that's silly. Some Necron Compound that it is a dry paint. It's a weird texture painting that on. I'm adding eyebrows. This is very dangerous. Uh, typically, I would say never add eyebrows. And some Nuln Oil Shade. This is quite heavy. I'm going to... You're going to watch me suffer through this quite a bit. So here's Pallid Witch Flesh. This is the closer to the color I want her, but I still want that uh, base coat of her uh, skin hanging out. And I want her chest slightly lighter than her, her uh, eye here. So here I'm adding her, her kind of actual... That's just pure pallid witch flesh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't like it at all. I, I mess up quite a, quite a bit here, so forgive me. I try to touch it up as best I can, but the the makeup is it's kind of quite difficult. I have her looking off to the side, by the way. Some administratum gray uh, dry brush there, 
And this is just a highlight, so it's a red leather with white mixed in. Um, and then severely watered down, just trying to get that, whatever that texture is, pop in there. And, and I'm putting a heavier one on the side to make it look a bit more worn, hopefully. Here's my Agrax Earthshade. That's what I put on pretty much all my on my bone. And that'll, that'll really make it pop a little bit. I'll add a little, little bit of a highlight, but, you know, nothing too big there. I'm putting any shade on... Um, really anything else except the dagger so uh pretty light on shade for me so there's that highlight back i'm going straight to a because i put such a, a light wash on it straight to a white mixed with the screaming skull and just doing a very basic high level highlight there just to let the textures pop uh, again on those as well i'm mostly just putting it on the tips and the front of the model i like to think the light is coming from the from the front there and we're off to highlighting the uh there's some focus the skin so this is just like one dot <laughs> of uh of white mixed in so this is barely noticeable uh not very heavy at all it's really only noticeable when it's wet um and this is the heaviest of the highlights i'm going to cover most of the model here just where it would it would hit you know whether it's the you know the top of the waist or or, or the butt there, or the knee, or even like her like heels in the back, you'll see. Or on the, uh, yeah, so right there, I'll just literally swipe it right across. And a tiny bit, bringing that chest back and some of her cheeks. Here it is with a little bit more white. You can see it's slightly more noticeable, and I'm being a bit more careful. This is probably about 80% of what I covered in the first one. So there's about a, you know, a 10% on either side, I'm hoping, of the the first highlight. So... Uh, building up those layers and making it smaller and smaller. Um, just trying to uh, not lighting the whole model too much. I do like the color, but instead just adding a bit of depth and it makes it look more noticeable. And I'm always adding a little bit on the neck there. Um, otherwise, I think it would look really flat. And I didn't want that. Uh, so here is yet another one. This is the third highlight. Again, I added about two more drops. This is a much higher one uh, than before. And, and so I'm really kind of being careful. And as you notice, just putting on like the knuckles and just a little bit on, on the side and, and maybe adding some muscle and a tiny bit on the knee. I mean, it, again, just not very much at all. Again, just trying to build up some, some depth and, and some tonal range to the skin to make it look more lifelike and realistic. Here's some Nuln oil. That's for the dagger. I'm just going to plop it on there and I'm going to lift up to put it underneath the hilt heavily. And then I'm taking that Necron uh, compound and just kind of highlighting the edge a little bit, but mostly the the knife point. So re-adding those definitions to the hilt, but mostly adding a sheen to the blade itself. And we're down to Astro Granite Debris. Uh, if you saw my cr Chromatis, Chromatis, anyway, the unicorn, uh, I've started doing this with my miniature painting of Massive Darkness. I think this base looks really cool. It's a really neat texture texture especially when it's dry brushed i'm gonna add a little bit of glue uh slightly off camera there i apologize i'm not gonna wait for that to dry but that's okay because i'm just gonna plop these on i really wanted this to almost look haphazard uh and and notice i added quite a bit of astro granite um to the to the side there i really wanted to add some some depth there and here's me struggling slightly less with this tall grass uh you'll see that i trim it but I don't, I'll trim it more after I film this. I, I apologize for that. Uh, but I did end it, I, the shorter you make it, the more realistic it actually looks. So I didn't make it about half the size it ends up being that you can see right there. Uh, this is their coarse turf. It's really for like, you know, kind of a general bushiness. Um, I'm adding a little bit of depth to the side. I'll add a bit more and then adding uh, green and brown. So I added a tiny bit of brown first. Then add a green, and then I'm going to add a little bit more brown. Uh, it's, so it's burnt grass is the green I'm using, by the way. So it's a very yellowish kind of grass, but still alive. Here I'm going to add some more bushiness. This is to just make the texture a bit more topographical. I don't know if that's a correct term or not. Uh, it, you know, make it a bit more, a bit more height. And this is the Valhallen Blizzard, very fitting, I think. This stuff was really cool. So if you recall before, I made my own snow. And this one, it actually dries wet now i know that doesn't make much sense but when it dries it actually gains a little bit of translucency it actually hardens so it looks more like snow than when you first put it on it actually ends up really nice i, I quite like it 
Anyway, you may notice I forgot to paint the base green, so you can see a little bit of the base there. You can't see that on the board. It's really just under this harsh conditioning straight above it, so not terrible, but uh, this is the gloss coat I'm putting on the blade, the tiny bit of gold she has, and then uh, that's really it, a little bit on the, on the anklet here. And I'm painting these just regular uh, gray. It's a, it's a muted color, not as stark as black, so it fits a bit more with the base, but still pops the character, and you can put those little rings over it, I feel, quite safely, as opposed to adding some texture like the first time. Touching up that base trim level a little bit, just trying to make it blend right in there. That would have worked a better green, but uh, whatever. And uh, there's the finished model. So again, remember I trimmed the uh, the kind of tall grass there to about half that height. I think it looks much better. Uh, let me know what you think about that snow. I thought that snow was quite cool. Um, and about the, the miniature overall, if you like the new basing technique, if you uh, kind of like these kind of you know, kind of more quicker videos on these kind of easier characters. It's really nice to be able to get a painted miniature straight out. Also, what you think about the uh, the skin and just highlighting straight up? I I thought that was quite the challenge, but I think it came out pretty nicely. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I'm glad there's not any kind of really stark shadows on her, and that she's kind of a a lighter character. Anyway, guys, that's it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment, let me know how I'm doing. I always appreciate your feedback. Check me out on Patreon if you like. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.